Disclaimer, please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk, then play at half speed. Thank you. Really? We went with my list. All right. Woo. Yes. Me. Yes. We went with your list. You don't have to do this every time we pick one of your lists. Yeah, Tom, now's not the time. Josh, don't use our real names. Oh, shit. Sorry, Dan. I almost forgot. We're robbing a bank. Why are we doing this again? Cardio. Please don't kill me. 17 minutes, 17 seconds, guys. Oh, yeah. Look, let's table this discussion for now. Please don't hurt anyone. Here, here's all the money we have available. Just don't hurt anybody. Ah. These people really get into the role. This money looks real. Oh, duh. They told me it was supposed to. Well, did they forget? It's been 18 minutes, 10 seconds. Yo, no, Dan. No, 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 no. We're not supposed to take the money. We're not? No. See, the cops are going to show up and chase us off. I have a wife and kids, man. Don't shoot me. Okay, yep. Sorry. We're not even pointing our guns at you. Just stop. I'm really sorry. Anyways, can I say the line now? No. No. You're not saying the line, Dan. We've gone over this. God damn it, Tom. No names. You did it again, Josh. Yeah, we discussed this, Josh. Can I say the line now, please? Damn it, Dan. No. What happened to using our code names, Tom? Fuck it. I'm saying the line. Ahem. No, no, no. I killed the bus driver. Wrong movie. Oh, oh, there they are. All right, guys, let's hoof it. But I feel like we're forgetting something. <laughs> so, uh, did you happen to catch the names at all? Yeah. Tom, Josh, and Dan. And Dan. Got it. Thank you very much for your cooperation. All right. Well, hey, we got what we needed here. Shift changes in about 15 minutes, boys. So uh, we're just going to pass this information off to the next crew. We're good to go. Yep. Here it is. I made sure to write it all out. So what do you want to do now? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Hang in there, kid. You're almost there, so I don't want to see you give up yet. I know Xander Berkeley and Heat is looking scary, but I want to see you tear right through him on your way to Robert De Niro and the Untouchables. I want to see you get mean against Charles Martin Smith in Starman. Otherwise, you'll never make it past Jeff Bridges in the last picture show. But if you got the guts to take on Sybil Shepherd in Taxi Driver, then I know you got the heart to go one on one with Joe Spinell in Rocky. Get in there! Step into the squared circle every Tuesday at firepitpodcast.com as Dan, Tom, and Josh start on their marathon to pound town. Taking on all the heavy hitters, going the distance against the heavyweight champion of boxing films, Rocky. Rocky. It's hope. It's heartbreak. It's haymakers. And it's here here at the fire pit. You're a wrecking machine! Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to The Fire Pit. I'm Josh, British name Reginald, and uh, we'd like to welcome you to the first episode of our latest journey, the Marathon to Pound Town. (laughs) Yeah. We're working our way over for the next six weeks to Rocky, the 1976 classic sports film starring a relative nobody named, uh, what was his name, Sylvester Stallone. I think we saw him back in Nithics. Anyway. So uh, tonight's going to start a kick-ass marathon. As per our rules, we've taken an actor or an actress from our last film and moved them on over to this one. And now to tell us more about who we're watching and what we're watching, I'm going to tag in Tom. That's that's how boxing works, right, guys? Thank you, Reginald. And no, that is not at all how boxing works. Hello, everyone. Tom here. British name Thompson. And last time out, we watched the 1991 action classic Terminator 2, Judgment Day, starring Xander Berkeley. Well, not really, but we're following him to tonight's film, 1995's Heist Tour de Force, Heat. Also starring Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, 
and Val Kilmer. So another art house film full of nobodies that never really amounted to anything. But hopefully Dan can shed a little more light on that film in the rundown. So Dan, what you got for us? Thank you, Tom. Dan here, a British name, Nigel. And yes, tonight we're watching Heat. It's a heist crime drama thriller. Uh, all joking aside, this movie was a very, very big deal at the time it was being made and was re being released, uh, as it uh, was the first time two powerhouses of the screen at the top of their game at the time, and probably still considered, or well, definitely still considered cinema legends to this day, uh, and long into time, is uh, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro were going to be on screen together for the first time, or more on that later. Uh Directed by Michael Mann. It has a release date of December 15th, 1995. A long running, 170 minutes. It had a budget of $60 million and a box office of $187.4 million. So, yeah. Made some bank. Uh, Rotten Tomato score of 87% and an, with an audience rating of 94% and an IMDb rating of 8 out of 10. So not as high as um, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, but still pretty up there. Yeah. So that's actually impressive. I'm surprised that this movie is lower than Judgment Day, considering this is supposedly like an Oscar contender. Or was it? I don't know much about this film or any trivia behind it. I wonder, do you know trivia behind it, Dan? Nope. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah, I actually have uh, not not a lot on this. Well, actually, there is a lot of trivia on this film, but uh, like I've been trying to do lately, I'll just cover uh, two or three, four things, and then I'll pepper the rest of it in as the episode goes on. As I mentioned in the rundown, uh, this is the first feature film to feature both Robert De Niro and Al Pacino acting together, which created a huge amount of hype prior to release. They both starred in The Godfather Part Two in 1974, but they never shared the screen together as the split, split chronology prevented this. Um, for those that don't know, uh, Robert De Niro is in the flashback scenes of uh, Don Corleone's uh, immigration to America and all that. So Yeah, he plays Vito Corleone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, so Robert De Niro, obviously his scenes were all in the past and then and Al Pacino's take place in the present. 1974 present. Also, um, honestly, at the time Godfather 2 was being made, De Niro wasn't quite the legend that he was in 1995. Like by the time 1995 comes out, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro had gone on to make, well, Pacino's known for the Godfather trilogy uh, and Scarface and um, Scent of a Woman and, you know, really powerful films. And of course, Robert De Niro, uh, Godfather Part 2, Taxi Driver. Like these guys were big, big names at the time. So uh, this was a huge deal when it came out. Um, when this movie was re finally released, it's even its advertising material, all the trailers, all the posters, everything uh, advertised uh, De Niro and Pacino showdown. Hmm. Like I said, big deal. Uh, they actually did eventually go and do another movie together in the just a couple years ago called Righteous Kill. Oh, yeah, I saw that yeah. film. Yeah, yeah I, not as not, not I don't know. I haven't seen this one yet, so I can't compare. But Righteous Kill does not have as high a rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Like I said, I've seen Righteous Kill and unless heat really craps the bed, I don't see it being any worse. Mm, no. Same. So during the big um, bank robbery shootout towards the end of the movie, rather than dubbing in the gunshots in post-production like most uh directors do michael mann actually had microphones carefully placed around the set so that the audio could be captured live this actually added to the impact of the scene because it sounded like no other gunfight shown on screen at the time so wait hmm. they were shooting actual guns no no they were still shooting shooting prop guns like the but prop guns still make a sound but it's not yeah, squibs right yeah well no squibs are the blood fake blood that pops out of people's oh, duh you know. I knew that. I was testing um, you. <laughs> prop guns fire blanks or just um, black powder charges or something like that. That's usually what prop guns do. And they still make a sound that sounds very similar to a gunshot, especially if you're right next to one or up close, uh, which is why actors and actresses, when even when they're firing a fake gun, a prop gun, they still wear earplugs because it still makes a very loud bang. We talked about that in Terminator 2. Linda Hamilton almost went deaf in the elevator scene. Instead... What most directors do is the gun sound effects are re-added in post to make the gun sound, you know, more bangy. But what Michael Mann did was he took boom mics and other microphones and strategically placed them all around the scene 
so that they would pick up the gunfire or the gun sound and mm-hmm. it would echo throughout the whole place. So it sounded like a real gunfight was going on. And oh, that's cool. Yeah. And it was very, it was a big deal at the time because no other gunfight had been shown on screen like that. Um, and it also adds to the impact of the scene because it's the only scene in the movie where he did that. The other gunshot scenes, they were traditional at it and post, but this one actually sounds distinctly different. Supposedly I've not seen this movie yet. I cannot confirm, but ever since reading that though, really looking forward to that scene. Yeah. Same, same. Wow. Um, yeah. Then speaking of sound, this is this entire film was filmed without a single sound stage. Every location or every scene is filmed on some location. Oh, that's cool. That's a nifty bit of trivia. Yeah. No sound stage whatsoever. Thought that was cool. Nice little dedication to the craft. And uh, just like uh, to kind of mirror or, or maybe even parody. Um, you remember how we mentioned way, way back in Armageddon, how NASA uses Armageddon for training purposes? Not for what you think. They use it to, to have managers <laughs> find all the mistakes and determine basically who's going to be a good NASA manager. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, for the longest time, and I don't know if they still do this. So any Marine Corps fans, um, let me know if they still do this. But um, as of June of 20 or June of 2002, I almost said June of 2022. So I'm looking into the future here. No, uh, as of June of 2002, the scene involving the shootout after the bank robbery was shown to the United States Marine Corps at MCRD San Diego as an example of a proper way to retreat while under fire. No shit. Hmm. Yeah, and adding to that, Val Kilmer was thrilled to learn that the moment in the gun battle scene where he runs out of bullets and rapidly changes his magazine is regularly shown to Marine recruits as an example of how to perform the action properly. Damn. This film is just getting everything right already. Holy shit. Honest to God, I was already excited to see this. This Actually, um, this was the movie that tipped my vote in favor of Tom's list because I really wanted to see Heat. But um, the more as trivia I looked up, the more I'm like, ooh, I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this. I've got more trivia that I'll pepper in throughout the rest of the um, movie. But I think that might be all I have for right now. Yeah, I think that's all I got for right now. I got some other stuff, but it, it kind of spoil. It's not spoiler, but it kind of like uh, there's just more things of looking forward to more scenes in the film. And as those scenes come in, I might say something about them. Even people who haven't seen this movie might know the the, the coffee shop scene between Pacino and De Niro, which was a big deal at the time because it's the first time they're on screen together. But I don't want to ramble on for too, too long. So, Josh, uh, I did mention in the rundown that this movie made some money, but uh, how did it do on its opening weekend? Ah, well, Heat, as we uh, said, was released December 15th, 1995. Um, And on its initial run, it had a domestic gross of $67.4 million. Now, um, apparently it had a re-release so when you get the 187 million that you mentioned earlier, um, that gives it a 120 million dollars even amount of uh, international that is actually not um, documented because international uh, box office was not as well documented in the 90s. Um, it's actually an interesting bit of trivia. I'm gonna have to look up on why they started getting uh, more accurate numbers for that because um according to the original release it only pulled in 67.4 million dollars domestically and 64 dollars internationally so uh that was in a release in New Zealand but uh so <laughs> they don't have all the numbers accurate but domestically at least um like i said released december 15th 1995 heat did not premiere at number 1 but something else premiered that weekend that did take the number 1 spot do you guys care to take a whack at it 1995 Hmm. Hmm. It's not Jurassic Park. No, that was like 93. <laughs> yes. Um, Nigel, any guesses from your end? I know what it is. I know what it is. So I found on, it well. It's on you now. Yeah, I found out. I found it out during looking up trivia. Um, I then I'm going to give up because 95, I was still watching Doug. I'll give you a hint. Or, I'll you, give no, you a... no, no, in 1995, he was still watching Jumanji. Was it Jumanji? Yeah. What it year was... is this? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Jumanji. But uh, do you know, like, the movie that was at number two in the box office was on its fourth week of release. Do you know what that one is, Nigel? No, I, I only saw that number one. It was number one. 
Yeah, well, this was number two in the box office. It was 95. You might have been watching this one, too, there, Tom. I'll uh, give you a hint. It was the first of its kind. Toy Story? Toy Story. It was? Oh, my God. Yes. But what's the, how is that the first of its kind? They've done CG. It was the first computer, co- fully computer animated movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, there had been CG before, but this was the first fully computer animated movie. But uh, other notables in the box office, he premiered at number three, pulling in $8.4 million its opening weekend. And number four was Father of the Bride Part 2 on its second weekend. And number five was Sabrina, pulling in 5.5. That also premiered that weekend. Um, And all of us who uh, owned a Nintendo 64 knows this game. But at number six was Goldeneye, bringing $3.2 million on its fifth week of release. Mm -hmm. Another movie that was in the box office starring Mr. Bob De Niro was Casino. At number eight, that was on its sixth week of release, one of my personal favorite sequels, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, was on its sixth week of release, and it clocked in at number nine that weekend at $1.8 million. (laughs) I used to like that movie. What movie 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 was that? Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. Oh, yeah. I used to really like that one. In fact, Idiot Younger Dan preferred When Nature Calls over the original Pet Detective, and yeah, he was a moron. Yeah, wow. I haven't watched that as a mo- movie as an adult, and I still have fond memories of it. So I refuse to watch it because I am an adult, and I have fond memories of it. But uh, at number 12 was Get Shorty. I was on its ninth week of release. That's a movie I'd like to get to. That one or uh, what was the sequel to that one that had The Rock? Oh, uh, uh, Be Cool? Be Cool, yeah. That was the sequel to Get Shorty. I've never seen, but I hear not good things. Yeah, I watched it. it. Came out what two thousand four. I didn't hate it. I don't know, eh. but uh, yeah. So Jumanji was the number one. Heat uh, ended up uh, going through the weekend of February second, uh, nineteen ninety six, where it finally ended its box office run at number seventeen after about eight weeks. That was an interesting weekend. Number one was Black Sheep. Number two was Polly Shore's The Juror. I forgot Polly Shore had a career. Yeah, <laughs> most people did. Most people did. But yeah, that's all I've got for the box office. Um, overall, the week it was released was a very heavy hitting week for the uh, box office. The week that it went out was not. Yeah, although Black Sheep was a good Chris, a Chris Farley, David Spade comedy. It I- was, it was, but it was no Tommy Boy. No, no. This is well. Tommy Boy's a hard bar to cross. It is. It is definitely a tough act to follow, too. I mean, because that's a story for another time. Yes. But uh, we got to get to those movies one day. I hope we do. I miss those movies. But anywho, um, that's all I got for the box office. Thompson, what do you got for the meta? I've got a few things here and there, here and there for the meta. I'm going to start calling it the production because I feel like that fits it a little more accurately because I'm not really going to focus on the here's and there's just who was in front of the camera behind the camera. So welcome to the production of Heat tagline, a Los Angeles crime saga. Summary, a group of professional bank robbers start to feel the heat, pun intended, from police when they unknowingly leave a clue at their latest height. So general info on this film, this is actually based on a true story of Neil McCauley, who was an ex-Alcatraz inmate who was tracked down by then-detective Chuck Adamson in 1964. He had been tracking this guy for years when he got out of Alcatraz, knew he was up to something, and just pursued. Uh, In fact, many of the characters are based on members of Macaulay's crew, and a lot of the action and plot beats in this film are also taken directly from events that occurred between the two of them. I'm sure Nigel will point some of those out as we go in, as that is spoiler trivia. But behind the camera, this film was written and directed and produced by Michael Mann. That's why when Dan was giving the initial box office, he just said, Michael Mann, and gave nothing else. He was in charge of everything. In fact, this movie was based on an original script he had wrote in 1979, 
which was then used for a television pilot he developed. But eventually, he would eventually get this. Um, he produced this along with Art Linson, who also produced some major thrillers such as Fight Club and Untouchables. Now, as a writer, man has done a lot of work that we'd be familiar with. Um, I, either of you care to guess uh, at least one of the things he's responsible for writing? I'll give you a what hint. What was the guy's name? Michael Mann with two ends. I'll give you oh, a hint. Oh, uh, I know. I know. Um, Michael Mann. Uh, no, I did not learn this. Uh, tr- he was big. Uh, yeah, he did both the Miami Vice movie. And wasn't he a, a director or producer for the Miami Vice TV show back in the 80s? He was at least. Yeah, a writer in particular. Yes, yes. And yes, he also wrote and directed Manhunter, which was the first adaptation of a Hannibal Lecter book, uh, which would eventually get remade as Red Dragon. I have seen Manhunter and some would argue it is better than Red Dragon. Um, we'll watch it sometime and I'll let is you guys know. Is that the one where uh, Anthony Hopkins wasn't uh, Hannibal? That is correct. Yeah, I can't no, uh, William Peterson or something, whatever his name is. He played Gil Grissom on CSI Las Vegas. Danielle, let us know in Discord. Yeah. Um, because she's the one that showed that movie to me. And wow, that movie is, you can definitely tell a uh, man was fresh off of Miami Vice. It looks like a Miami Vice. <laughs> Not necessarily a bad thing, depending on your tastes. But in terms of um, other films he's written and directed, uh, he's also done Ali and Last of the Mohicans before this. So big deal kind of guy. And the fact that he had almost complete control of it, too. That's also impressive. Uh, And in front of the camera, we have our big two, as Dan noted, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, both dramatic character actors from the New Hollywood era of the 1970s. Dan named a few of their films, so I don't need to really go into much more than that. He also stole my thunder about Godfather Part 2, about De Niro being Vito Corleone. Uh, my bad. I, no, that's fine. I didn't know. I need to rewatch uh, Godfather 2 to see that, because I didn't recognize him. Again, quality actors. But this film also stars, as Dan noted, Val Kilmer, who this is a repeat for him on the show. We've seen him on Top Gun. We also have John Voight, Tom Sizemore, Ashley Judd, Danny Trejo, Tom Noonan, just to name a few. There are a lot of names to this film, and I could honestly spend the next five to ten minutes listing them. But that's what's behind the production of this movie. So, um, Josh, what are you expecting now that you know all the trivia, all the money, and all the production that went behind this movie? I've already seen this movie, uh, but I saw the version with the Joker. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> so, I'm... yeah, um, I'm fully expecting... The Dark Knight minus the Joker. Batman's in this, right? Yes, he is. Val Kilmer's in this movie. So, <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's. I'm solid. not wrong. You're, yeah. You're not, wrong. you're out of line, but you're not wrong. Nope. Not wrong at all. And uh, Bob De Niro was in the Joker movie. I mean, come on. Come on. Come on. I'm, come I'm on. coming. I'm coming. I came. Dan, Dan say it. Gross. Thank you. But- <laughs> Take a drink. <laughs> But uh, no, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to tonight's movie. I don't know why I've never gotten around to watching it. You know, it's been one of those movies just like, oh, yeah, that movie exists. I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> um, no, I've really never had a desire to watch it. Like, even when it came up on your guys' list last week, I was just like, yeah, okay. I'd be interested in watching that one. But it's just like I'm not enthralled to see it. So I'm hoping that... Um, Based off of the reviews and everything with this movie, and I am going to uncover a hidden gem. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I don't, I'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, I hmm, I'll talk a bit more about it in my yeah. expectations. So, but you're like, I don't, I don't have any high expectations for it. I don't have any low expectations for it. Um, but I'm hoping that it's a hidden gem. I love it when we watch a movie that I've been basically n- negligent about. 
Mm-hmm. And then I come out like the thing, like I go back to that one. That was my favorite movie of that journey. And like, I still want, like, I want to go back and rewatch it. I usually have a buffer of time that I go through and rewatch movies. Yeah. But, um, but that movie is probably going to be the first film that I rewatched so quickly after us watching it on the podcast. And I'm hoping I can uncover something like, like this one. I hope this is a similar movie like that. Um, I'm not super familiar with uh, the director, but I do love the actors in the film. So I know I'm going to get solid performances out of them. But beyond that, it's like I really don't have a lot of expectations out of this one. So if I enjoy it, I'll be happy. But that that's that's mine. What about you, Tom? Um, I've seen one or two scenes from this film. It's been highly recommended for a while. I've, I've seen the diner scene that Nigel's alluded to, and I can't remember what else scene. But I, I'm like you, Josh. It's just one of those movies like, oh, Heat. I hear good things about this film. I'm going to watch a movie I've seen 10 times already. <laughs> it's, it is weird how that sometimes works. I mean, I'm not, I'm not expecting I'm going to hate this film. I'm, you got Bobby De Niro and Albert Pacino. His first name's Albert, right? Alfonso? Alonso? Yeah, uh, let's go sure. with that. Yeah. Discord us about Al Pacino's real first name. I love everything that Al Pacino and most of everything that Robert De Niro's been in that I've seen them in. So I know I'm going to get quality from them. This is peak Val Kilmer. Uh, All of these actors and actresses are just quality performance actors and character actors. I love Tom Noonan. Tom Noonan's fantastic. Um, He was also Frankenstein in Monster Squad, if that helps you visualize at all. But the two plus hour is a little daunting considering how late we record these. But you know what? I've stayed up later watching worse films. So I know I'm going to be watching a quality film. How much I'm going to like it remains to be seen, but I am highly optimistic. What about you, Nigel? Well, I mean, again, this this is one I've been wanting to watch for a while. Um, I've really wanted to see this movie, but it's another one that I keep passing on. I just... Like you, I like I'm I'm scrolling through because I think this was on Amazon Prime not too long ago, and I'm scrolling through Prime as difficult as that is, <laughs> trying to find something to watch, and I'm like, ooh, Heat! I've always wanted to see that. Yeah, I'm gonna watch Masters of the Universe. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made, yeah. but this this did end up tipping the scales for me when we were presenting lists last week. So uh, I'm really looking forward to watching this, uh, especially as I started learning more about the movie. Through the trivia, just like the some of the ideas for the sets. The only thing that gives me pause is Michael Mann. Honestly, the only other movie of his I've seen is the Miami Vice film from 2006. And that yeah. movie was boring. Yeah. Very boring. And it had two incredibly charismatic actors in it, in Jamie Foxx and Colin Farrell. Mm-hmm. And yet the movie ended up being a freaking bore fest. So that's kind of where I'm worried about with this one, because again, two very good charismatic actors in Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. And I'm kind of afraid that it might be a little long, especially since it is 170 minutes. Yeah. That's, that's my only, what I'm worried about too. Yeah. That's my only real fear about the movie is that Michael Mann, it might be another like boring movie that doesn't really deserve to be as boring as it is. Cause he's got two really good charismatic actors in it. So, you know, to kind of come to man's defense, when you go into Miami vice expecting the eighties TV show and you get grim and gritty, actual sort of drug busting that it's like, I wanted an ice cream cone. You gave me a steak. It's a good steak, but I'm not hungry for a steak, goddammit. I want an ice cream cone. I already ate. Yeah, I, I kind of see that, but it's just like, even though M- Miami isn't the 80s anymore, it's still like considered a very hip and sexy and fast town in America, and yet he captured absolutely none of that in the movie. Mm. So if we ever get to Miami Vice, which, spoiler alert, guys, I'm not in a rush. I'll talk about that then. That's my only trepidation going into this film is that this movie is going to be the same thing where it's, it's a movie that tells a good story and has two very charismatic actors, but probably could have used a half an, half an hour trimmed off of it. Sure. So sure. And it sounds like that's the main reason that none of us have ever seen this movie, that runtime, that 
that heaviness of this. Yeah, movie. yeah. Normally, you look at a runtime on a movie of 170 minutes, and that's just not something you just sit down to watch while you're you got nothing else to do on a Saturday. You know what I mean? It's just you make time for it. You have mm-hmm. to schedule around. It's like ah, oh, I can't watch you today, um, De Niro, Pacino. I've got I've got to fold laundry, and you require my attention. I'm just gonna throw on Knight's Tale. Ah, uh, sorry, buddies. That's yeah. half the reason I haven't seen that one Michael Keaton movie with like the Hawkman. Oh, oh, Birdman. Oh, yeah, Excellent. yeah. That's a great film, but you're not wrong. You can't not watch that film. We can't do something else while it's on. Yeah, it's like I tried. I started watching it, and I was like, on my phone, I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to pay attention to this movie. I'm gonna turn on a Knight's Tale. <laughs> so literally, the example I just gave <laughs> for not watching this. I agree with you. I'm I'm worried that this what this movie is going to be too. Mm-hmm. I've seen longer. I've sat through Lawrence of Arabia without. Well, I've had to take piss breaks, but you know who doesn't. But so I've handled that. I've handled full on twenty four hour movie marathons. So sitting through one film like this doesn't daunt me. I mean, though you guys talking about maybe it needing sanded down a little tighter runtime. Now it's making me a little more worried. Well, no, no, no I'm not criticizing the film yet i haven't watched it i'm just saying that my view on miami vice was they could have shaved a half an hour off that movie and it still would have been one long and two still would have told the same story like that whole subplot where he goes to cuba cut it out but this i haven't seen this movie yet that's my fear you know because the lord of the rings movies are three three and a half hours long but they go by the story keeps moving and it keeps you engaged and it's one of those movies that by the time it ends you're like oh my god three hours went by you know, you don't feel it. The Dark Knight is a long movie, but by the time you get to the end of The Dark Knight, you don't feel like you've been in a movie chair for two and a half hours. So mm-hmm. long movies don't scare me. Long, boring movies that could have used some trim, like The Shootist, scare me. Or um, Art of War, you know, it's like, oh my God. Those that was are the an hour and a half. Have. Yeah, that was an hour and a half movie. And it That's felt crap. You're three hours. Lying. You are lying. Art of War was five and a half hours long. No, I think it was a little longer than that. <laughs> it took us a whole day to record that episode. I mean, Josh, does Nigel's trivia help ease any of your trepidation at all? Because I know I got really excited when he was talking about all the technical stuff. Oh, no, I'm looking forward to the movie. Uh, based off of the actors alone, I'm not expecting a like bad performances. Mm-hmm. Um, I love uh, Robert De Niro. I loved him in Casino. I loved him in uh, oh, Stardust, where he played the... Uh, was it the gay uh, ship captain? Oh, uh, yeah. That, like, you told me about this, where he like quoted Shakespeare and got really sad that no one got what he was talking well, about. Well, no, no. He knew about Shakespeare from our dimension or whatever. And uh, he took back and people thought that Shakespeare was talk- was shaking your spear. But he was like, and, uh, it's another time. But I love Bob De Niro. I don't think I'm, I'm looking at his IMDb right now. And I'm just looking at uh, movies of his that, uh, oh, he was in uh, Wag the Dog. Let's remember that one. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's a two-peat for this. I forgot yeah. about that. Repeat. Three-peat? What's the third one he's been in? Repeat. That's that's the word for two-peat. Oh, two-peat. Shut up. I'm off the <laughs> clock. <laughs> Man, I was just looking through it, and I can't find any, like, main movies that, uh, movies that he was in that I just didn't like. I mean, there's the Fokker series. You know, Meet the Parents, Meet the Fockers. Yeah. Honestly, the only movies that I can think of of Robert De Niro's I don't care for is I don't like the two comedies that he was in with, uh, was it Billy Crystal? They analyzed that analyze and analyzed. This, I analyze don't this. like those. Really? Those movies were not funny to me. See, I loved Analyze this but, this, but Analyze That was flaming garbage. I've seen both of them, and I do not remember them. Analyze so, yeah. This was definitely like a, uh, ah, I'm not expecting this to be funny, but wow, it's funny. Analyze That's like, oh, this is exactly what I was expecting. Throw it in the dump. <laughs> but, but yeah yeah so i don't know i'm looking forward to the movie tonight i'm interested but yeah the rum time is a little daunting yeah especially considering we start recording at 10 and we'll start watching at midnight yeah, yeah. so um do you guys have any other thoughts no i think we've been pretty succinct by this but i wonder if anyone else has thoughts about this movie nope oh thank god okay so who lost last, I mean, won last time? I did. Did you remember to do the quiz before we uh, started recording, Dan? Sure. It's all the audience has to know. 
That's all the audience has to know. Spoiler alert, he didn't. He was reminded that he had to do the quiz when we started recording. <laughs> I got it done! Truly, the, the quiz has truly become punishment. <laughs> We need to take a poll. Who leave leave comments either on Discord or whatever to tell us. Do you really like us doing this part? And if you really overwhelmingly love it, we will keep doing it. But if not, we're cool with cutting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I think the only time I would I would be like if if we got rid of it, I would keep it. Is if we're watching a universally fan favorite film like a Lord of the Rings movie or another Star Wars. Well, one of the good Star Wars trilogy movies. I'll keep it. I'll, I will keep it until the end of the season. And then you let us know by the end of the season if you want us to keep doing this trivia. Or if you're like, nah, they've added other things. You know, just let us know. Like, uh, you know, what if you guys got rid of it in season three? We wouldn't care. You know, or no, please keep it forever. And we, we might ignore it. to we, hear you suffer. Yeah. And we might. You know what? You're going to hear suffer enough. OK. All right. There's more bad movies out there. We haven't got to yet. So, I mean, we'll suffer more if you really want us to. I mean, <laughs> we're masochists like that. Ah, stalled long enough. Okay. Yeah, to get those final questions in. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Tom, we'll start with you. Uh, what are the rules for this, Nigel? For those that have never. Um... There are no rules. It's like Mad Max out there. Calvin Ball. Calvin Ball. Good. No, um, I will read off IMDb trivia titles. You tell me whether or not the score is one through ten. Uh, and whoever is the closest without going over within a margin of two uh, gets the point. If you guess the number right on the dot, you get double points. And whoever has the most points at the end of five questions loses. I mean, wins. So what's this margin of two bullshit? How we've been doing it for a while. It's like, you know. Like yeah, like if I if I read off a re review and you say it's a six and Tom says it's a nine and I say it's like it's seven, then you get the point because Tom went yeah, over by I'd two. Be closest. Yeah, you'd yeah. be closest without going over by yeah, two. it's just who's over closest. But if we're even distance apart, then whoever go gets it without going over gets it. Oh, my bad. Guys, guys, guys. I, I've been it's at been work. It's been a long day. It's been a very it's long, been a long day. day. I had to work a double today, okay? I'm exhausted. So, Tom, we're well, starting with you. Seven. <laughs> yes uh <laughs> no okay strong on testosterone weak on script i'm still gonna say seven damn i was gonna go with that um six josh is closest it's a four shit <laughs> <laughs> all right josh good but over long over long uh, yeah yeah too long um Seven. Damn it. That was going to be mine. Eight. Josh takes a commanding lead. Seven. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Tom? Nigel. Embarrassing. They spelled embarrassing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Literally copied and pasted it from IMDb. That's in the red squiggle. Yeah. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Ember two. Oh, I could say one. Three. Tom is right on the money. It's two. Damn it. <laughs> shit. I mean, shit. Josh, one of the best films of the 1990s. Eight. Nine. Tom is closest. It's a 10. So now the score is tied. Tied. Be <laughs> 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 who laughs last, Josh. All right, Josh. I don't know. I'm sorry. Tom? Yes. Uh, I don't get it. Well, try reading it out loud. Okay. Uh, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this sounds like a middle of the road one, uh, but lower. Actually, it might be higher in the middle, but I'm still going to say four. Josh, don't, don't do it, Josh. Five. Josh wins. It's a six. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. God damn it. I mean, good game, Josh. Good game. Congratulations. Well, we, we, could, we could do the last question. If Tom gets it right on the money, he'll win. No, 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 no. no. Josh won no. out of five. It's, we got five, five questions. Only go to six if it's a tiebreaker. But tell us the tiebreaker. All right. <laughs> it would have gone to Josh, obviously. Or Tom. So a great if no, slightly. No, no, okay. Yeah. A great if slightly underwhelming crime film. Goes to me? Yeah. Go yeah. You, yeah. Th this question would have been to gone to Josh first. Oh. Okay. Tom went the last one. It's This one would have been to me. Okay. So uh, uh, say it one more time. A great, if slightly underwhelming crime film. Six. Damn it, that was going to be mine. Um, Honestly, probably is going to be a seven, but 
You know what? Yeah. I'm going to say seven. Tom would have got it to an eight. <laughs> See, we would have been tied if we would have done it that way. So, yeah. yeah. Yay, I got trivia. <laughs> Kings to you, Josh. We're all Couldn't keep jealous. Couldn't another good streak. <laughs> it's, like the pri- it's like the prize in Highlander. Wait, so I went from being an immortal to being a mortal? Yes. So do I get anything else? You can have kids now. Oh, Gary. You get to live through Reagan's 80s. <laughs> yeah, but uh, those immortals live through anything. And I think they could live with Tom play the music. Two to the left. Five to the right. Seven to the left. Shit. Four to the left, two to the right, zero either way. Double shit. Mm. Welcome back to the fire pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and professional safe cracker, Tom. And if I can just figure out how to get into this safe, all of our financial problems will be solved forever. Now, six. Nine. Nice. (sighs) But thank you for staying safe with us here at the fire pit. We're back from our vacation determination and jumping right into training with our marathon to pound town. Six easy training regiments that'll be sure to get us in shape for our main event, Rocky. That first step is building patience. And what better way than by executing an elaborate heist? But speaking of heists, let's see how things have gone with the team on their latest foray back into the world of crime. One day earlier. So we're not going to tell him? (laughs) Oh no, he would not agree to it. So we're going to be his Silent trainers. Silent trainers. Makes sense. I mean, we are the most qualified. Of course we are. Now, to plan out the next five weeks of training, we're going to need to just... Oh, hey, guys. Oh, what you talking about? Nothing. Nothing. Ooh, is this a map? No. Blueprints. We're going to rob a bank. Wait, again? Sweet. Dibs on being the, uh... The, uh... Shit, what are the what are the roles that they do? The fuck is that? Uh, okay, so the, the first step is going to be crowd control. Then, then the, we're uh, going to need to work on... Wait, are we actually the, robbing a bank? The guy, Jeez, come the guy on, the Dan. Buttons. Do you really think that I'd be... Hey, what was the name of the guy that does the stuff with the... Uh, buttons shit what's the word but um, seriously though this like this is this is kind of out of character for us i mean we're not really no, 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 what, what, worry not nigel no no worries this, this is this is just going to be an ad- maintenance guy no no it's mate not mate wait no um uh, fuck it i'm bored now i'm gonna go get a white claw and a donut wait, what was i talking about ah Damn it, lost my train of thought. Anyways, so we need names to call each other during the robbery. That's it. We need names to call each other during the robbery. So Oh, sweet, code names. Okay, I'm Danny. No, you can't pick that. It has to be different from your real name. Adding two N's to oh, Danny oh, does not make you a whole new name. Are... Wait, what? We're picking names now? Oh, ugh. okay, okay. Um I wanna um I wanna be uh Jeremiah Oliver Stephen Harrison. Ooh, that's a good one. You should just use the first letters of those names, like Ibum or NASA. Ooh, that's a good idea. J O S Harrison K H. Call me Joseph. Well, for fuck's sake, it doesn't work like that. Like what? I mean, it sounds really good to me. It's creative too. Joseph. Tom's just pissed he didn't pick a cool name like us. No, because it should be pronounced J O SH. Figures Tom's gonna go and ruin it. Are we gonna do this for very much longer? Yeah, I'd rather go watch something. Yes, we have to plan for all contingencies. There's movies on this. Yeah, but I would rather go get some ice cream. Ooh, I want ice cream too. But the heist! Too late, we're out the door. Ice cream. 
God damn it. Wait up, you jerks! I want some ice cream too! <laughs> Spoiler alert, team. I don't think it turns out quite how you expect. Might want to just stick with cycling classes. But if you want to cycle through some movies that you've been itching for us to watch, or if you have a bunch of advertisements that you want to cycle out, or if you want to cycle in some shout outs to some of your friends or family, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line as well as the reason for your email, whether it's to have us give you or your friends some kudos on an episode, or to buy an ad spot during our interspersal segment, or if you just want to chat with us in private, then toss it our way. From there, we'll read it. Bring together a crew of charming yet skilled thieves. Execute the heist that's sure to set us up for life. And never respond. You know, I swore I had that email on me during the heist. Did I leave it in the vault? Or was it in the getaway car? Hmm. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Capital C. Capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Oh, I, th I think I got it. Left to the three, right to the six, right to the nine, feel just fine. Oh, getting low! Finally, there it is. A first edition Charizard holographic, shadowless, mint condition. <sighs> With this baby, I'll finally be able to re I'm just gonna stay back here and try not to cry for a while. I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. I wanna be the very best. <laughs> Whatever it was... <laughs> and now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. My nephew's sitting here next to me watching porn. <laughs> well, we know where Josh's attention is going to be now. Yeah. Let's just enjoy the movie, guys. <laughs> Damn, you guys. Oh, speaking of porn. All right, Al Pacino. Looks like we're watching porn here. My attention's diverted here, David. <laughs> Y'all excuse David, me. David, shield your eyes. You're too young for this. He's he's 24. Yeah, but Al Pacino's like 54, so he's still too young. So just yeah, shield your yeah. eyes. Okay, let him go. What do you mean? We can take him on. What? On what? What are you going to take him on? Breaking an entry? They didn't steal anything yet. Don't you get it? It gets knocked back to some chicken shit misdemeanor. They do six months and they're out. No fucking way. <laughs> Worse, they'd get trespassing. <laughs> they'd pay a fine. I mean, they can get them on suspicion. They do have the water drill right in there, but yeah, but there's they would, you know, like it'd be like circumstantial evidence of like were they even using it, you know? Mm -hmm. You can trust us. We're from Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna stand out, uh, guys. The ambulance guy has a hockey mask on. Yeah, it's fine. It's Jersey. <laughs> I don't know what they do here, but it's Jersey. No, it's an armored car, so it will be fine. Yeah, the people inside are dead, though. It's like an egg. You shake it really hard, the yolk's gonna break. In this metaphor, people inside are the yolk. Clear! You didn't give me the heads up. <laughs> Fuck, I can't hear a goddamn thing. What? I said I can't hear a goddamn thing. What? I can't hear a goddamn thing. I said I can't hear a goddamn thing. You both are idiots. Roger Van Zandt. All those banks in the Caymans. Runs investment I'm going to have a half-assed accent, but the long hair and mustache is going to make me authentic. I mean, it's John Boy. At this point in his career, he can just put in extensions, grow a mustache, and fake an accent. You'd think with Bobby De Niro 
gunning for your ass. You'd be as far out of the country as you can get. Dude, if I was on the other end of that phone the minute he hung up, I'd have caught the next flight to Fiji and never looked back. I think he's talking about this guy. Yeah, but still, this like, is... any time in this movie that De Niro threatens me, if whatever care, if I'm that character, I'm gone. If he tells me to stay and fuck Val Kilmer, I will stay and fuck Val Kilmer. Of course, I would without Bob De Niro's direction. Especially 90s Val Kilmer. Guys, I'm doing it again. It's the White Claws. The White Claws are definitely having an adverse effect on Josh here. It's, it's time we did something about that. What are you reading? Lady, why are you so interested in what I read or what I do? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? <laughs> oh my god. I don't god, see I anybody didn't... else here. But are you talking to me? Bob! Wrong movie! Had our air, immobilized it. Pop guard number three, because. You like snapping. All right, guys. We're going to do this, okay? Now just listen here. I've got this. We need to go look over there, and then we need to look over there, and then we're going to go over here, and then I'm going to go home. I'm going to. My wife. Sarah, do you have Tourette's? <laughs> hey, you, pal. You hard. I'm gonna... Your mother. And I'm gonna fuck her in the... Oh, I, I snapped at the wrong time. I'm sorry. My name's Neil. I'm 80. You were 30 years older than her, but okay. The bank is worth the risk. Stay and take it down. Oh, you know, for me, the action is the juice. I'm in. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm sure all of these characters will live to see the end credits. David already bolted. I guess he couldn't stand my banter. Did, did I scare you off, David? David! Oh, he's masturbating. Oh, I'm gonna go get something to eat. I'm keeping all of this in. Well, my mother died a long time ago. My father, I don't know where he is. Enough about my folks. So is your bed comfortable? Good, because you're gonna be sleeping on the floor. <laughs> See, he thought cops putting fire into a crowd. He forgot he's in L.A. How you doing? What do you say I buy you a cup of coffee? It's 10 o'clock. You know how old I am? I gotta go to bed in an hour. <laughs> I may be stoned on grass and Prozac, but you've been walking through our life dead. I may be stoned on grass and Prozac, but your ears smell like B-flat and your blood tastes like blue. Josh, are you high? <laughs> I don't know how to do anything else. Neither do I. I don't much want to either. Neither do I. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> Al Pacino wins. <laughs> Fatality. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm watching this movie very carefully. I got an idea for Josh's birthday. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> and now, back to the episode. All right, so that was Heat. So The uh, heat Nigel. is on. The heat no, it's not anymore. On. We already shut it off, Tom. Oh, oh, shit. So, yeah, we finished the movie. The heat is off. The heat Dan, is off. please, oh. please, please cut him off. Yeah, that's, that's enough, Tom. Yes. So, that was Heat, Dan. What was your final thoughts on this film? Well, I, I, honestly, this was a really good film. Um, I was kind of nervous um, because this was the movie that tipped the scales towards me voting for Tom's list over yours. And all I was thinking as the opening credits were going by was, please let me like this movie so Josh doesn't hate me. Please let me like this movie so Josh doesn't hate me. And, uh, uh, well, you can find another reason to hate me, Josh, because I did like this movie. <laughs> um, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it was a long movie. Um, maybe could have trimmed a couple of minutes off of it, but honestly, I don't know where you would trim it because in my opinion, every scene furthered the story and helped to really build the character so that by the time the characters start dying off or start, uh, moving away from the picture or, or having other traumatic events in the film, you actually care about the characters, whether they're the bank robbers or the, um, police officers so really good stuff just i loved how that like i said every scene just kind of added more and more layers to different characters so that when it um came time for the big payoffs um it impacted your thoughts on them those characters so i really enjoyed that and um we'll probably get into it when we get into our group discussion but the gunfight scene or the the high scene where they put all the different mics around the the city to capture the gunshots. Oh my God, that lived up to the hype. I loved every minute of that scene. It might be one of the best shootout scenes I've ever seen. 
in the film. That was really good. Um, I'm going to ramble and we're going to get into some group thoughts here in a little bit. But Tom, what are what about you? This is your first time seeing it, too, right? Yes. Although I have seen a few key scenes just like glancing out the television. I think my dad was watching it on uh, HBO or rented it or something like that, because I had seen the final scene with De Niro and Pacino. So I knew how that went down. But a lot of the other stuff I had not. The hotel scene, just wow, just goddamn. This wasn't a heist film so much as a film about human suffering with an occasional heist in between, just to Mm -hmm. add some nougat. This was an amazing film. I share your sentiment, Nigel. I don't know where you would cut. Everything in this film is necessary um, to add to your thoughts about the story too. I loved how everything layered into each other and connected with one another. There were character interactions. Everyone felt like people 90% of the time. Pacino, Pacino, there were some acting choices he made that yeah. were a little, uh, but as you said, uh, the, a lot of the cut scenes, um, he was supposed to be recovering or suffering cocaine addict. So no, 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 that's no, no scenes were cut from that. It, there was the, that characterization was cut from the, the set, like the second or third draft of the script. Oh, okay. I thought those were cut scenes. Uh, still, that does help me understand why he chose those. Personally, in terms of the story too, I do did like the middle arc or the, B story of the traitor in the group working with the money launderer because I think that really helped. Otherwise, it would just been you know Pacino versus De Niro. Now you having that wild card in the middle that really just stirred things up. Really did. It was salt in the cookie. It just made it pop a little bit more. I don't want to steal too much. So Josh, your thoughts? How are you feeling about this film? Well, um, I liked it. I really did. I thought it was uh, it was really slow at the start, but it was a lot of character building, a lot of storytelling. In terms of how much did I pick up my phone during this film, um, I would be lying if I said I didn't. Mm-hmm. But because I mean, this this film definitely had a lot of slow scenes and a lot of just dialogue scenes where it's like as long as you're half paying attention, you kind of got what was being said. Mm-hmm. Um, I did uh, I did like it though. I really liked the movie. It's probably going to be a little bit longer before I watch it again. I don't know if I gained anything by watching this movie, but I will admit from the last hour of the movie was really good. Mm -hmm. Like from the part where I would almost say right about where Robert De Niro's character scopes out that they're being watched or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they leave lead into that, into the bank height or bank robbery from there on. It was pretty exciting didn't have a lot of downtime but um at that point we knew what to expect out of these characters and i like they did that one aspect in like cinema where they like to tell till uh basically what you're gonna do Mm -hmm. um with the whole uh the guy if the heat's right around the corner and you can drop everything in 30 seconds and go they hammered on that quite a bit so it's like you knew exactly when uh like that was going to come into play you know so it's like that was the uh the Chekhov's gun. You knew that was going to come into play at some point during the movie. And I felt like they did that a lot. Not with just that one. What was the other thing that they did a lot at that they said at? Um, I'm trying to recall. There's a lot that they did yeah. that just kind of foreshadowed the, or the philosophy of the film. Mm-hmm. But I'm mulling over that and I don't want to like step on yeah. your initial thoughts. So. But no, I, I really like that's probably like the one negative I have is this film was a little slower paced. I have some stuff for our group discussion, too. But overall, I really liked it. I loved the audio and how they did the audio in this film. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like you were talking about the uh, shooting scene when they had the police shootout after the robbery. That was amazingly well done. I wish I had like my 5.1 surround sound system hooked up so I could listen to that in 5.1. Like I would watch that scene alone just with a uh, surround sound hooked up to it just to see how that played out. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that would be awesome. That and the final showdown scene with... uh, Bob De Niro and Al Pacino like that was the way that the audio played that entire chase scene it's just like there was no music 
They like amplified the ambient sounds, the planes, the running through the grass, but none of the human factors in it. Like there, what you couldn't really hear the breathing, and and the music really didn't kick in until like just seconds before the showdown. I really liked how they just kind of how that uh, that happened, mm-hmm. and then the flow, yeah. how all that just like came together at the very end. Um, and he still didn't let him die alone, type thing. But no, overall, I really liked the movie. I got to say, the last hour was significantly better than the hour and a half leading into it, mm-hmm. or the two hours leading into it. But at the same time, you need those two hours leading into it. There wasn't a lot of wasted space into here. I was going to ask yeah, you if you that, felt that way. Yeah. Yeah. I felt the same way. I, I felt like the, I wouldn't say it's a slog, but the first hour is very slow, very methodical. Once the bank shootout happens, the movie tends to go all downhill. And I don't mean downhill in a bad way. Just think of it as a roller coaster. The first half of that movie was the roller coaster slowly going up the hill. And then the last, yeah. the from the shootout scene in the bank. That's the adrenaline part of it. You know, yeah. yeah. You got to build up to the anticipation before the first drop. Mm-hmm. Now, I guess moving on to the uh, group discussion, because that's pretty much all I've got. I liked it. A little slow, made up for it in the end. Sure. I loved the ending. I thought the ending was good, too. Like, uh, it was one of those endings that didn't let me down. It ended, and then credits. You didn't need anything. Yeah. Now, maybe you didn't need saying. anything extra stuff. You didn't need to know about Natalie Portman's character. The end of the story, and that was it. You're good. Yeah, it's like you just you didn't need any additional info after that. No, I was just going to say that I think you, we go back to the whole through line of being able to just cut and run. And it keeps dr- putting that forward in all of the m- real tragedy of these of this film. Like if you can't just cut and run, you're going to not just get yourself hurt, but everyone else around you. Uh, you know, De Niro's character, Pacino's character, mm-hmm. Trejo's character right up front right there i think the moral of this film is don't get in a relationship relationships are bad just stay single bro bro just stay single yeah if you notice about the relationships though val kilmer escaped his wife survived but they're not together danny trejo and his wife are both dead Mm -hmm. um bob de niro and uh his girlfriend escaped and he died so like all three of them had a do he want, He didn't want to get caught, so he went out the way he wanted. If he had stayed with her, he probably would have wound up. But yeah, it made it made a good point when you said it's like he didn't want his loved ones to get hurt too. Mm-hmm. So if he would have stayed in the car, that scene would have played out a lot differently. Mm-hmm. Or if he would have dragged her with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I have, I do have a question for you guys in terms of being able to cut stuff. Like put our directorial hats on for a split second. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, because because I'm so much more qualified than Michael. Mann no, I just I, I just have a question for you because I'm. Maybe I missed something. Like, I guess my question is uh, the Allstate guy. God damn it. What's his name? Dennis Haysbert. Dennis Haysbert. Thank you. Thank you. It wasn't just Allstate. He was also in 24. But uh, yeah. Did I miss something with his story arc? Because it felt like all of like his all of his scenes really didn't have. He was have a lot. He, he, he His story arc was definitely he's an ex-con. Yeah. That got released on parole. And he got a job as a fry cook at a diner. And the, the the boss of the diner was abusing him, so to speak. Um, and um, just saying, you know, hey, if you, you don't do anything, things things I ask, I report back that you're on drugs or you're, you know, whatever. And then I'll, they'll send you back up to, to prison. But uh, they didn't really mention a lot of like why he was in jail, although you would assume it was robbing something because De Niro was looking at him as a driver. Yeah, he was the getaway driver. Yeah, yeah only because but it's just like, it's like I was saying, like they. Uh, yeah, it's like they needed that, but I mean, did they need the exposition on his character? I mean, you had because his entire story arc came to a close when his girlfriend saw on the news that he had been killed in action. Right. Yeah. Well, and there was the, nothing that, on that. But that's what this movie did. This movie didn't have any wasted characters. That's what I liked about the fact that they did actually set up Haysbert to be a character. And that way, when they kill him, you feel bad. You feel the bad that he took this job to get out of being that crappy fry cook and mm-hmm. he got shot up. And. Yeah, you know, yeah, you even though he's a bad guy doing bad guy things, you still felt bad when the bad guys died. Like that was, you know, you understood, and you felt so his entire in- character arc was to be built up. So we felt bad when he died. Yes. Exactly, exactly. Josh gets it. Hey. Yes, but yeah, his that was his entire story arc. I, I, that's one of my, I guess, critiques of this film. But maybe that's the point of this film. It is very melodramatic very dear god 
it's not enough. I mean, spoilers from here on out. Um, I don't know when we're not going to get into spoilers, so I'll try to put something in post. Oh, trust me, we've already spoiled a lot of shit. Shit, I got my work the, cut the, off. The movie, the it's movie a movie came from out, 1995. Uh, 95, yeah. Good point, but this, I feel like some of these spoilery moments are big deals. I knew De Niro and Pacino had their big fight, but spoilers again. I did not know that Natalie Portman was going to try to kill herself. In yeah, her- that was kind of a shock. Like I was thinking, like the Weibo or whatever his name was in, was in the bathroom, especially when the Dan pointed out the water uh, on the carpet. I thought that was just to accentuate that this was a shitty uh, like hotel. I, she was only there. Because we needed her there to be a corpse to make us feel bad. And not just that she cut her wrist, she cut the femoral artery in her leg. I'm not a doctor, so if I got that artery wrong, send your emails to Josh and Dan. I just edit this thing. But she could have done it. is in the neck, femoral's in the leg. Thank you, Josh. So Josh knows these things, I don't. I watch a lot of medical dramas. You can trust us. We're from Ohio. Yes. <laughs> That's our through line. But yeah, she, I mean, I think she was just her, what's her name's daughter, not his daughter. Yeah, it was no, his stepdaughter. Yeah, it was and a she, stepdaughter. She chose to go stay with him, not her. Yeah, because they, they established that her real dad's a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah, but still biological. That's a whole other to do. That's legalese. I'm not going to bother with. But the reason she was there was so we could we could find her corpse in the tub after she tried to commit suicide. So we'd feel incredibly bad for Pacino's character. Um, even though he has the worst taste in wives. Cause fuck that bitch. Jesus God. That yeah. She straight up said, that's just my friend. Like, yeah, I'm cheating on you and I don't care. Women in this movie are terrible until yeah. they die. Seriously. Treo's ki- wife is only redeemable because we never really met her, and she died off screen. Yeah. Woof. But um, I, that's my critique on this. This was very heavy-handed in the melodrama, but I think that's the point of it. It's supposed to be a heavy It film. definitely doesn't glorify um, crime. No, it doesn't glorify crime, and no. it didn't glorify the violence either. Like, it didn't glorify... The police being cowboys, and it, I do have to give it credit for that. And they also didn't glorify the criminals being criminals; like they mm-hmm. don't make them out to be these like rogue noble outlaws. No. So, yeah, like I would say, movies like Blow with Johnny Depp, um, that definitely glorified the crime life. <clears throat> I've never seen. I have yet to see. That's it's a good film, but it definitely glorifies. Uh, it definitely glorifies the crime life and the drug life and all that other stuff. Yeah. Whereas like the uh, similar movie that came out that year was traffic. Maybe been, I think it was around that time came out where traffic did not glorify. Well, it's just it. funny because traffic, I think is another Michael Mann film. Oh shit. Huh? Yeah, I have to I think. look that up after this because wow. When but he yeah. hits, he hits. <laughs> oh no, never mind. He didn't do traffic. My bad. Oh, well carry on though. Josh. But no, it's like uh, I, I did like that aspect. I don't want to say it's it was realistic. Oh no, no. A lot of the stuff was just definitely Hollywooded up, mm-hmm. but um, it was very thick on the drama. You're definitely right in that. Although some of the stuff I thought was Hollywooded up, and like it's actually what happened, like that diner scene where it's like, if I did not know that that actually happened to the people that this movie is based off of. I thought that would have been a total Hollywood thing. It's like, yeah. okay, the co- detective and the bank robber meet in a diner to talk and have like a Batman Joker kind of heart to heart. That's totally Hollywood. That happened. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, and also the shootout, the way he killed um, De Niro's character. Um, that's how it went down in real life, too. No shit. Yeah, the the, the, the detective guy was uh, tracking the um, robber, and uh, he had to kill him. Wow, so yeah, those, some of those Hollywood... We, we were joking in the movie, like that balcony scene with De Niro, and I can't remember the actress's name. We just kept commenting how... The background looked fake, and it's like, what? What did you say it was like, Josh? It was, um, it was re- like they took a uh, top view and they just skewed it. It yeah, looked very two dimensional, yeah. like just two dimensional at an angle. Yeah, but it was like, um, 
reality is fake. That's that's a lot of that in this situation. Actually, the yeah. the trope is reality is unrealistic. Yeah, all these weird like melodramatic stuff, chasing through an airport and meeting your arch nemesis in a diner weird as hell oh my god good film good directing too josh you said that you're gonna take a while to watch this again i may have to do it sooner because i need to pay attention to the cinematography yeah the Uh, cinematography was really good it was i thought this was a really well shot film and i i'm not lying like i'll say it again i can't give it enough praise that shootout scene was amazing it totally lived up to the hype when i was looking up trivia and i read about the stuff they did to put together that shootout scene i'm like i can't wait to get to this scene i really hope it's as good as advertised it was better than advertised like, yeah one of the best shootout scenes i've ever seen and, and to that yeah. add to that it's like what he knew not to it's like he didn't use any of the standard dramatic action cliche camera stuff no whip pans no weird angles any weird shit like that or the tent stuff i pointed this out while we were watching like since aquaman i have been very keen to watch dolly shots every time they do that dolly in because it's a slow zoom yeah that slow zoom and i was watching like he's doing the slow zoom and he stopped he knew when to stop using the damn thing whereas aquaman slow zoom slow zoom Slow zoom, slow zoom, etc. Dude, mm. yeah, it was just every scene, every scene. Oh, f- like I'm looking at the uh, IMDb trivia about this scene. Mm-hmm. Apparently, that one scene on the terrace was filmed in front of a green screen. So it was okay. Yeah. So it wasn't just us. They're all saying the background was filmed separately with the camera running at three frames per second in order to boost the exposure level to complement the foreground activity. Okay. So so I don't know how that would, but it felt like a 2D video laid flat because it had no depth. Yeah, yeah. Except for the one scene when it was directly to their back, but the angled shots, that was the that was one scene that really stood out for me. It's not a nitpick. That's just an egregious mistake. Yeah, it just, it looks off. Yeah. It looks off. Like, it could be real, but it looks off. You have a really made, well-made cake, and someone's just made a thumbprint on the side. It's that to me. Yeah. Still going to enjoy the cake, but... Hmm. Yeah, it, the thing was, I think my biggest issue with that scene is it detracted from the conversation they were having. Yes, this meaningful moment, this one night stand that turned I don't into- I'd have to do I don't I'd have to do some more research on the technical side of things, but I wonder if that's just because it pops out to us now more because we're watching it in HD. It could be. It could be mm-hmm. that could that scene like in standard definition probably could have had depth. The way that they did it with the digital editing could have and we're no experts. I mean, you can still trust us. We're two guys three guys <laughs> from Ohio. So yeah. who have but, never uh, made an actual movie. Yes. But we've discussed seventy seven of them. This is true. Josh is right. We have discussed 77 of them. Trust us. We're professionals. But uh, (laughs) I don't know. It's like I know a little bit about digital editing. I did take a college course on it, but uh, (laughs) I'm nowhere near the expert. Trust me. Everything I'm saying is bullshit. I just have a microphone. Um, (laughs) But no, it definitely felt like like the way that they did it back then in translation to HD. I can see that causing issues i don't know the technical details about it but it de- that was the one scene that got me the, the my one nitpick about this movie hmm. um but yeah i don't want to harp on that scene for too much you heard my piece yeah okay. yeah and again there's there's a lot that this film does more right than it does wrong um, yeah but i overall i think good start to the journey yeah oh yes yes uh took us three hours but we got through it it's all and downhill then- from here tom no because until rocky until Rock, no, no, because we've got um, uh, the Untouchables after this, so I know that hey, film's a quality. Spoilers now. Oh, that's right. We're not at that point yet in the episode. So, for, okay, end spoilers now. Okay, welcome <laughs> back. But you know, I love this film. I'll watch this again, despite the over melodramatic action stuff or plot stuff. Fantastic film. Nine yeah. out of ten. Right? I'd give I'd, it like a high eight out of ten. Wow, I, I, Josh. I'm also saying nine out of ten. Josh is becoming the new Tom, Dan. He's the one that's like, I don't know. I don't know. That or much... just my tastes are shittier, so like no, I, could... I think I think you're becoming more discerning. I think your tastes are becoming more refined. 
Ooh. I mean, you did like, present a list that had two movies made before 1960. So yeah, that's, I know. you know, I know we didn't go with it, but I was like, that hats off to Josh. He's, he is definitely going out of his comfort zone on that one. All right. It's time for me to quit. I'm out guys. See ya. <laughs> and that's our show. As a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. Regular episodes, whenever the hell we want to release them. So, <laughs> or, t- or till his editor gets his ass together. Yeah, so please like and subscribe on whatever medium you choose. Leave a review, it really helps us out. Uh, helps us show up on the rankings and whatnot, so when people search for movies or podcasts or... Well, they're searching for podcasts. If they search for movies or entertainment or comedy, we'll pop up higher up on the uh, on the uh, lists. So we really appreciate that. Hope to see some new ones next week. We'll definitely read them off on the podcast if you put them up there. Mm-hmm. And just to qualify, I'm really hoping to start having these back on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. I got off my schedule because of life and everything else. So hopefully by the time this comes out, it'll be on a Tuesday and not on a day. But also be sure to join us on Discord as well. The link is in the episode's description at discord.me slash firepit. You'll get notifications of new episodes. And best of all, you'll be able to engage us and our other fans in discussions about the show and episodes and movies we watch and movies we may, will possibly, hopefully one day watch. So hop on in. It is... I assure you, a fun time. And you can email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Uh, mentioned way back that a-hole that does the interspersal mentions it two or three times as well. Uh, if you want to send us a long message, a short message, tell the interspersal guy he sucks. Um, or a sad message, it's up to you. Also, just be sure to like our Facebook and Twitter at firepitcce. Both are linked in the episode's description below. Uh, our, we have a new URL. It's no longer firepit.podbean.com. It's now just firepitpodcast.com. Far easier for us to tell everyone about and far easier to find, too, I'm finding out. so Yeah, yeah. Update your bookmarks, people. Yep. Yes. But, uh, let's see. I, I would like to give a shout out to my nephew, uh, David, who stuck it out as best he could and watched about 45 minutes of the movie with us before he uh, went to bed. But he's actually up here working, so he's uh, cleaning air vents. So if you need your air vents uh, cleaned out, he'll he'll do oh. it for you. He's an honest guy, too, so he'll actually do it, and he won't screw you. Yeah, shout out to David for joining us for a little bit and putting up with me talking. I think that's really what made him leave, is because I was talking during the movie, and he did, probably got annoyed by me because I was translating between you guys and <laughs> not telling him everything you guys were saying. But I digress. Also, shout out to uh, Plex and uh, Sync Lounge for hosting our viewing pleasures this evening. Minor technical difficulties on the computer operating system side, so no shout out to Microsoft again. But yeah, that's all I got. And from my end, I would like to shout out Audible. Audible is a editing software we utilize, or at least I utilize, to edit the episodes that I 95% of the time get out on time. Um, it's not Audible's fault that I've been a little behind on the past couple ones, but it does make it easier for me to splicey dicey everything we say and stitch in some fantastic foley and music that YouTube will flag me for because it's a dick. But that's not Audible's fault either. It is a free software, so we're not paying for it, and they're not paying us to say anything about them, so I highly recommend them. Also going to shout out Zencaster, which 99% of the time has been pretty reliable for us. At least far more reliable than Skype. Um, There's some aggravations sometimes, which I'm going to cut out of that. No, no, I'll keep that in. <laughs> sometimes it does a little snarky on we're us. We're recording. But... It hasn't lost a recording yet, so it's 100%. Yeah, on it hasn't lost a recording yet. It just seriously, c- c- cut it short a little bit there, Tom. You don't need to go on for an hour. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, thank you, Zencaster. And finally, two of our Facebook followers, Carrie and Lips, two of the hundreds and growing who join us on Facebook, whether to see whether we post anything new, post new episodes, listen in, or just like having us around. We thank you 
for sticking with us and helping to keep the fire pits burning. And uh, I would like to shout out Peggy, the OG friend of the channel, uh, as usual. Thanks for continued support and listening. Also, a special shout out to my brother. One of my brothers is expecting his first kid in April of next year. So that's an exciting time for him. Going to be a first time dad. And um, I can only give him this bit of advice. Get out while you still can. No, he's it's too late now. He's um Yeah, it's a little late for that there, Dan. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh parenthood's awesome. Enjoy the ride. Um just do your best. <laughs> yeah. Uh and before I uh shout out Podbean tonight, I would also like to give a special shout out to something that's near and dear to all of our hearts uh on this podcast. We've mentioned it a thousand times in almost every single episode. I mention it multiple times in every single episode. We have yet to get to an actual movie, but um a special shout out to Star Trek the franchise. It's Star Trek Day, a day or two after we're done recording this. September 8th, 1966. So that makes Star Trek a good 55 years old now. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah, on September 8th, 1966, uh, Star Trek graced television screens for the first time with The Man Trap, the pilot episode of Star Trek, the original series, the second pilot, but I won't get into Star Trek trivia here. But yeah, (laughs) special shout out to Star Trek. I know we haven't got to a Star Trek movie yet. It will come in the future. But um, we mention it in every single episode. I can't help but shout it out. And then also a special shout out to Podbean for hosting our podcast. It's been great. Uh, it's very easy to use. And it's the home of many other awesome podcasts, including this one. So go to podbean.com and look for the fire pit. Outstanding. Well, team, this has been an amazing heist of a film. We all got in and got out. And thankfully, nobody got hurt. Uh, but uh-oh, uh-oh. I think the feds are on us now. So- Ma, hey, hey, mm. calm down. Because the music's going to hit us so hard. It's going to make us say, oh, my Lord. So thank you for blessing me with a mind to rhyme and two hype feet. Yes, yes, you can't touch this. Right? That's what we're watching next week, right? Uh, an MC Hammer biopic called Untouchable. Yes. Yep. Can't touch this. Yep. <laughs> That's so bad. Oh my God. That's so bad. Uh, Join us next week. We are taking Robert De Niro from this fantastic movie heat and moving him to another fantastic movie this time in the streets of Chicago in the 1930s as Robert De Niro plays Al Capone squaring off against Elliot Ness in the untouchables. Can't touch this. Josh, lead us out. (laughs) I've been Josh. I've been Tom. And I've been Dan. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there. Mm. Mm. Whoever had the idea to get ice cream after that heist is awesome. You're the one with the idea this time, Dan. Mm. Mm, I got hot fudge and caramel on mine. So good. You didn't need to get an extra scoop, young man. You're supposed to be on a diet. What now? Oh, hang on, hang on. Yahoy hoy! Hey, what's going on over there? Looks like a standoff with some cops or something. Let's check it out. If you come peacefully, I can lighten the charges. I didn't rob no bank. We got your name right here. It's, uh, Tom... Donajash. No, 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 no. That's like, that's two A's. It, it, that's Tom Jorajdosh. Yeah, it's written right here. It's written right here. We got eyewitness in Tom Jorajdosh. So, you come down peacefully. We'll be good. So, uh, what's going on here, officer? Oh, yeah, these three tried to rob a bank today. We have eyewitnesses that put them at the scene. Oh, wow. Uh, damn. Yeah, we were there. Yeah, you guys were awesome. I don't know what the big deal is. You uh, might want to take a step back. We suggest you people return home, because we don't want anybody to get injured. Ooh, that looks like pretty tasty ice cream. I have to get me some of that after this. You hear that? You're keeping me from ice cream! Come on down! That's nice. They're protecting and serving. Hopefully they catch the guy. Fine! Charge my damn card! That's what it's for! They're right there. But yes. Uh, Look, it's not my fault you dipshits don't know how to do your damn jobs. Look, if you just keep your... No, you do not hang up while I am giving you the... Mm, curse word! So, what was that all about? It's a freaking escape room we went to this morning. They're saying that we didn't show up, and now they're gonna charge us double. What? That's weird. Mm, yeah, really weird. Mm. 
Yeah, we got your names. They're written right here. Eyewitness account puts you in the bank. I swear to God, it's not me. I am not the guy. I'm not. Oh, hi, Mark. I have a flawless impersonation. 